Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'll be discussing how I got a 330 in the GRE, and I'll be letting you know what strategies I used and what strategies I think were um, most beneficial to my, my study. So I got a 166 on the quant section and a 164 on the verbal section. Basically by studying for about probably two months, um, I will say that at the time I was in Morocco in the Peace Corps and I did not have internet in my house, I would just go to a local cafe and download some materials and then go home and, and use that. And uh, it probably was very beneficial for my uh, studying just because I was not distracted by the internet. But I will, I'm just saying this to let you know that you don't need a lot of fancy things. Um, you don't need to buy a you know thousand dollar course or something like that. Um, as, as long as you, you follow some of the steps that I'll, I'll lay out today, then, then you're, you, you have a good chance. So the, the first point I want to make is you need to study every day or, or most days and not just study every day, study each section every day or each, you know, verbal and quant every day. Don't, you know, have like four days of verbal, four days of quant or something like that, because you need to get in. A rhythm and you also need to have lots of sleep cycles in between everything you learn because if, if there's large gaps you, you almost start to forget and it's it's almost like a sport you know how like uh, if you have a race coming up you have to you know you have to train for it and have a, a training camp and it's very similar to that so i would say study every day and um and you should be good so the second thing I would say, though, is to keep track of your progress. Take practice exams and track your progress. But other like small ways to track your progress is like you can have an app that just uh, that you use to study vocabulary with, and it automatically tracks your progress for you. So that's it simplifies it for you. Um, you need to, for example, you know if you you do a set, if you get you know like three out of twenty wrong or something like that, you need to review those three and do them again another day. So my point is you need to track what problems you get incorrect and have an error log. That way, you know, a lot of times when you're when you're studying, we we get something wrong and we re re read the answer and we tell ourselves, oh, okay, I get it now. But if you do it again the next day, you may not actually understand it as much as you thought you did. So I would definitely take a gap in between the next time you do the same problem again, but make sure you do it again, okay? Don't just read the answer and tell yourself, okay, I'll get it in the future without actually testing yourself on those concepts, okay? So basically, um, use apps, uh, track your progress with practice exams and make an error log and study every day. Those are some more general, general strategies. Uh, that I definitely would um, implement. I mean, even if, force yourself to do even a little bit every day. You know, sometimes it might be hard. So even force yourself just to review a little bit of both quant and verbal, and it's going to go a long way. It, it, it makes it like a habit. And it also like, you know, just starting is, is most of the battle. So if you tell yourself you're just going to do a little bit, you may, you may end up doing more. Okay. For the quant section, there are a number of general, like, you know, study habits that, that I would suggest. The first thing you need to know for quant is you need to make sure that you understand all of the rules and principles that are tested in the exam. So in the description, I have... Uh, a link to like all of the math rules. It's, it's called like a math review. It's, it's published by ETS and just read through it. You don't have to read it all, but read through it and whatever looks like it's unfamiliar to you, that's when you need to focus on it. Okay. This way, you know, once you know everything that could be thrown at you, it's like you speak the language of the exam. It doesn't mean you're going to get everything right, but at least you will know how you could get to an answer. So you basically need to know all the rules and, and just, just read the link that, that, I, that I have in the description for that. Okay. 
for quant, the second thing I definitely would say is do a lot of practice problems, more so than verbal for sure. Quant is all about practice and all about experience and getting used to, you know, quant comparison types of problems and just everything that they, they like to throw at you because eventually they start running out of kind of ways to ask you questions. And if you get to that point to where you start to see things like repetitively, then you're in a good place. Um, your instincts will be, will be right for how to approach certain problems if you've seen them all before. Um, so yeah, do practice problems all the time and keep an error sheet. Of course, with that error sheet, I would say, you know, once you get something wrong, review it again the next day, try it again the next day, like new without looking at the answers and then do it maybe a week later. And if you got it right both times the next day and a week later, then maybe do it again, like, like three weeks later or something like that. But if you continually get it wrong then keep forcing yourself to do it. Um, if you do continually get it wrong, it, it, it's a good thing. It means that your error sheet was not a bad plan, a bad idea. So, uh, yeah, so that's all of the, the quant general strategies I have for verbal. I would say you need to have a basic understanding of all of the strategies that you should use for, uh, for each like question type. So with reading comprehension. You need to, in, in my other videos, I talk about some strategies. Um, you need to use like kind of the, like the, the canonized strategies. Okay. So like, for example, you know, writing, writing one, one or two sentences for each paragraph. Um, I would say, you know, one, another strategy would be like reading the first question before you actually read the text to help you be a more active reader, things like that. Um, for the other types of questions like sentence equivalence and text completion, you need to understand, of course, the most important strategy of reading the text and not looking at the answers and imagining a filler word and comparing that to the answers. That's the single most important strategy for text completion and sentence equivalence. So basically, once you understand these strategies, you need to practice them, of course, Definitely practice them um, with practice problems, but I would not say you should do as many practice problems for verbal as you would need to for quant. You just need to get used to using the strategies. Uh, the next thing I would say, or the last thing for verbal is studying vocabulary. So this is probably the single most important thing you need to be doing once you understand the strategies, because you know it doesn't require much um, of course, there's a lot of vocabulary, but to memorize the meaning of a word isn't, doesn't take much um, actual work. And, it, and it, you know, it, it allows you to get questions right that you would have got wrong previously with no real change in your like, intellect. Like, it's purely just knowing what a word means. And that's free points. Um, of course, there's a lot. That's why I would suggest doing it every day. You cannot cram vocabulary. It's impossible. Okay. So the three things for verbal are understanding all of the strategies. Just read, just look up like reading comprehension strategies, uh, text completion strategies, um, sentence equivalent strategies. Decide what works best for you and use them in practice problems. And then of course, the other thing is memorizing vocabulary daily. Okay. Finally, uh, I'll just talk a little bit about the writing section. It's, it's the least important of in the GRE, the least important section. A lot of schools uh, don't put much weight into this, but I'll just say, um, again, you should have a plan for writing your two essays. You should have a plan on how you're going to outline your essays. And you can find strategies for those online for the issue essay and the reasoning essay specifically, or the, the argument essay. Um, I would then say practice. In the description, I'll also put the uh, a link to the essay prompts. They're all publicly available, by the way. Um, there's a pool of like 200 and something, I think, for each. And look through those, look through those essay uh, prompts and practice. You can practice untimed to start. 
that would definitely be uh, most beneficial to to do it on time to start just so you 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 get the muscle memory um but after that start doing it timed time yourself uh, accordingly see how long it takes for you to make your outline relative to how long it takes to write and of course i would say practice without spell check because you you may notice how many things you actually spell incorrectly and that could be big so I would say practice without spell check and see afterwards, you know, what, what words you, you often misspell wrong and, uh, you know, get the right spelling for that. Or I would say even like during the test, do not, um, don't write something that you, you're not sure how to spell. And lastly, I would say is often check your word count on your practice essays. You should be shooting for 400, 500, 600. Uh, I will put in the description also another link to a website that actually ranks um, average scores based on how long the essays were. And the longer the essays are, actually, the, the higher the average score is. I'm not saying writing a longer essay will guarantee a higher score, but it will make your essay look like those essays that have higher scores. So that's, that's all of the strategies I have. Uh, these are general strategies. These are not like, you know, um, specifics about uh, how to actually do any specific problem, but it's just study strategies. And um, feel free to look around, look around the, the channel to find some more uh, actual tactics in, in specific problems. But uh, I enjoy talking about my experience. If you, uh, if you want any help with tutoring, feel free to go to my website. And uh, please subscribe. So have a good one.